Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Nights with Evan Pinion. I'm your host, Raven White from Curious Corbett Publishing, and today we have a very special guest. Jessica, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Jessica Grayback Glover, um, an author, artist. So, yeah, that's <laughs> about the gist of me. everything, really, because you're a bomb social media poster, too. <laughs> Thank you. This is, does not come naturally to me, so that is a compliment. It's been well, very it's difficult. A lot, it's a lot of work, and you do it really well. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks. <laughs> So I was so excited when you reached out and you asked to be on our podcast. And, um, you know, I've been following you for a while. I love your work. I love you. It was so cool to meet you last year at the LA Times Festival of Books. That was fun. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your books for all of our viewers and listeners? Okay. Um, so uh, I'm a writer of multi-genres. I kind of tend to skew towards something that's a little bit... Um, supernatural or fantastical I guess that's why I've just spec fiction um every time I try to write something that's normal there's always like and there's a ghost and there's a vampire but they're fae you know like it just takes a turn so I have to say I think I'm a spec fiction author whether it's literary or upmarket there's always a, a, a little angle there um and currently I have two books which are um published and they're part of the Another Beast Skin series. It's an adult contemporary fantasy series. So I have Another Beast Skin and A Braiding of Darkness and um, I'm waiting for my rights to be returned for my third book to be released in that series. And then on April 25th, I have Stars Like Gasoline coming out and that's kind of a genre bending, kind of Southern Gothic, kind of thriller, um, really hard to pinpoint book, which is probably exactly how to paint a picture of me <laughs> like, like can't really nail down the genre so yeah. I'm so excited for um your upcoming book because I love southern gothic I've really been getting into it lately so nice. I'm really looking forward to reading it when it's out nice excellent yeah it's and it's funny because I I say southern gothic but it takes place in Florida so it's kind of almost like there's that that, that different edge to it um and i grew up in south florida so there's a different creepy humid <laughs> like moss covered whatnot to it but um but yeah there's a there's a lot of angles and aspects to the book so that was kind of it was it was hard to pinpoint but i'm really excited because it's the book that's been closest to my heart thus far i think so that's so important too like when you're a writer you're writing like all the time right and you have all kinds of projects and you're submitting and doing all this stuff but every once in a while we have that like piece that's like really important to us and then you yeah. you have it and you watch it come to the light of day and you're like oh my god people are actually going to read this it's so exciting I feel like that's like a really fulfilling moment as a writer it really is yeah I mean that's kind of what it's all about isn't it it's I mean we're we're bleeding onto the page and then yeah. being able to present that and say would you like to read it would you like to consume this bit of my of my inner self absolutely um, being able to offer that up I think it's I mean it's incredibly vulnerable for any artist and um but I think that's why it's so commendable for those of us who are in in these fields that we can actually offer that and um just be able to be present enough to know that we're offering something to society I suppose that's, that's oh yeah I agree a hundred percent um and you know it it's always I love when I'm talking with new authors or or like new to me authors anyway and and we're talking about like how we got started and how did we even end up on this winding road that is authorhood so mm -hmm. how did you get into it like what what prompted you to begin your writing journey um I think honestly it's 44 years in the making um I'm 44 obviously uh, but I've been writing my whole life my mom worked for Pan Am and so she would travel for work all the time and a lot of times because I flew for free I would go with her and That's I'd be cool. sitting in airports killing time and I wrote poems and vampire stories on Pan Am cocktail napkins and I love that. It's, just, it's just it's been a part of me my whole life um, my first novel that I wrote was when I was 12 and it was a vampire novel called Eternally Yours. I love that. Um, <laughs> and so that's, it's, it's something that I've never really, I've never really gave up on. And then my major in college was creative writing and then international studies, intelligence and foreign policy, and then a minor in German. Um, it was 
because I can't nail down a genre, but, <laughs> um, and I took a break for a while. I was, um, I was writing and submitting kind of in the early two thousands and it was a different animal back then because nothing was online. And so you're sending out manuscripts randomly and you're spending, you know, $30 here, a hundred dollars here. And you're like, there's absolutely no, you're not getting any feedback. You're not getting any benefit. And I gave up. Um, which was fine at the time. And I think looking back on it, I think, oh, I should have started earlier. But now I think I'm like, there's a right time for everything. Yeah. Um, so I took a I took a break from writing for a while and I have two kids. And so, you know, I was kind of busy with that and took time for myself. And I actually did more um, like visual art throughout my kids' youth because I would just kind of set up areas for them to be creative and then I would be able to like paint and do things like that so it wasn't like I gave up on my artistry right um and then in 2018 I took my kids back to England to see um, my husband's side of the family and he was working so he couldn't go and I just was inspired by my mother-in-law she sold it now but she had um, a 16th century cottage and wow it, yeah <laughs> it backed up to the Ashdown forest which is 100 acre wood from Winnie the Pooh Oh my gosh, how cool. Yeah. And it was just amazing. And I remember just kind of laying there and, you know, when you're late night thoughts and you're lying in bed and just, my husband isn't there. So I'm on my own and I'm just reading my books. And I was like, I wonder how many lives this cottage has seen because they were cottages that they, it wasn't just one family, you know, they would be like 10, 15 people in a very small space wonder how many lives this cottage has seen in the village that she lives on. She lives, she still lives there, but is um, located on ley lines. And, and so it's known as one of the ley lines in the UK. And so I just started thinking about what would happen? What if, you know, what if there were crystals and what if there was a veil between realms and that's how another beast skin got started. And so I kind of challenged my kids. I'm like, Hey, why don't we all start writing a book this summer? And we did. And, it's published now. So. I really love that. So. That is so cool. <laughs> I have a special place in my heart for like older buildings and houses. And I feel the same way. I'm like, you know, you walk in there and you're like, this, it, this house like knows so many things. It, right. It's been through so many people and stories and exactly. heartaches and, and joys. And it's, it's, I find like architecture to be really inspirational. Um, you yeah. know, when I'm writing and stuff like that too. I love to go like visit places and just kind of absorb the feelings and the vibes of it. Cause yeah, I feel like there's a there's, you know, you, you come and you go, but I feel like there's bits of us that are still left behind in it. Absolutely. We leave energy trails wherever we go and, yes. and building materials and, you know, things are encapsulated within the stone, especially like, you know, limestone structures, they absorb so much energy. Um, so I think that that's, that, yeah, it's definitely, a, a thing to note when you're traveling when you're seeing different places that have more soul than you know new buildings it's sad one of my, but it's side, true. One of my side hobbies is ghost hunting and mm -hmm. um i just visited a old a historic place uh here where i live and it was built in the 1800s and um was used as a school and then uh, as an asylum in later days and i'm walking through the building and i'm like touching these walls like I just, you can almost feel like all of the, the energy and the vibrations left behind. Yeah. And I always feel that like any place you visit that has age and, and history to it. Absolutely. It's a very Absolutely. powerful thing. Yeah. Especially if, you know, when you kind of really tune into it and know what's there. And yeah, like my mother-in-law's cottage was always like, she always felt like, oh, it was a happy place. And I think overall it was, and like, our bedroom like it was like she always called it Damien's bedroom my husband um even though he never lived there really <laughs> but like our bedroom there was there was no feeling there was didn't feel like there was anyone else in there there's no other energy her bedroom it was like it was actually a really big room so it was probably like 16th century terms like six different rooms but you kind of go and step up into where her bed area was in the closet and once you got there there was an oppressive feeling and I didn't like it and it wasn't necessarily like malevolent but it was a presence there that felt like it knew I was there <laughs> and I was not on board with that. So, yeah. Yeah. That would unsettle me as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
you have all these cool experiences, all this inspiration, and you finally poured it into a manuscript, wrote a book. That is so cool. So <laughs> what was it like when you decided you wanted to publish it? How how did you start getting it all together and getting things ready to go? Because that's, that's a big undertaking when you decide that that's what you want to pursue. Yeah. Um, I was really green. I have to say that to start. I had really no concept. I started querying another beast skin. It was like 172,000 words and I was querying it to agents and they were all like, all the rejections were like, it's too long. <laughs> Sorry, kid. Um, and so then I, I scaled it back a lot. I cut a lot of words. I split the book into two. So a lot of what was originally in the first book um, is moved to the second. A lot of it was just cut in general. Um, and I didn't have that online writing community that I do now. Um, so I didn't have access to a lot of like CPs and beta readers, um, which that's how we live and learn, right? I mean, that's just what it's all about. Um, and so then I just started looking into uh, querying for an agent or querying for an indie publishing house and just kind of weighing the options between them. And um, I eventually went with a smaller publisher and that's, you know, that's where we are now. So yeah, I signed, I signed the first book. And then after that, I signed the second and third with them. That was that's so exciting where we are now. Yeah. Very <laughs> cool to watch it like all come together. And it is, it's a huge learning process. Yeah. And I feel like there's so much pressure on authors who are starting out to like know everything, yeah. but you don't know what you don't know. And I feel like there can be a lot of gatekeeping when it comes to learning yeah. the process and how to do everything. Absolutely. A lot of yeah. trial and error till you find your way. Definitely. Yeah. And once you get into this, this, this writing community and reading community, um, we, we have a lot of re references. You know, I have a lot of people I can go to and say, now with Stars Like Gasoline, I've text so many people okay what did you do here okay i'm running into an ingram, an ingram problem or it's a kdp problem can you point me in the right direction and it's so it's so refreshing to have that now and not feel like i'm beholden to someone else messing up <laughs> so, um yeah i it the the community i know has been a big thing for me as well and and it's i think it's one of the things i love like most about the indie community is how everybody is pretty much pretty supportive of everyone you know like we're all trying to do the same thing but differently absolutely so I um I just obviously as an indie publisher myself the indie world has like a special place in my heart but Definitely. um I I knew like from when I was young that that's what I wanted to do I wanted to do I wanted to go the indie route you know yep. uh, I never even bothered trying to query with a big <laughs> agent oh uh, I guess I just was like <laughs> I just don't want to deal with the rejection. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's fair enough because it is hard. <laughs> Rejection's not fun. So, so now you have your, you have a couple books out and you, you've really grown as an author and you're making all these connections online. So, so how has your journey and like your experience as an author been? Like, have you had like uh, disappointments or you had like surprises come up maybe that you didn't anticipate? Um, I actually, I think honestly, a bit of both or everything. I've, <laughs> yeah. um, I've had a lot of, I've had a lot of wins, mostly community wise. I have to say that. And I'm not a competitive person at all. Like, I'm the one who will slow down to let someone who's like really wants to cross the finish line. You know what I mean? Like I, yes. I'm a supportive person. I don't, I don't compete. I'm not one of those women who competes with other women. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, um, I've had a, a lot of, a lot of wins on that front and just the amount of support I've gotten from the indie community has been amazing. And I, and that's kind of why I, I feel like in my heart, I'm always going to stay indie and that's kind of who I, I mean, I listen to indie music. I like <laughs> indie artists, you know, it's just, that's who I am. Um, it gets into everywhere, doesn't it? Exactly. <laughs> when you start to write, it's even like knowing that a small business is just so much more um, heart sound yeah. that, that it, it, so I think that's just what I'm all about. Um, and I have had disappointments. Um, I think I mentioned when you uh, put up a question box on Instagram about like what you wish you would have known. Um, I would have had my contract looked over because I've run into a lot of snafus. My, um, my experience started with an indie publisher and it switched to a hybrid and that's not what I signed up for at the time. And so, you know, you live and you learn and you make the best of it. And so that's kind of, that's where I am right now. 
And Stars Like Gasoline is a passion project. And so I thought, I'm just going to go for it. I wanted like kind of full creative control of that. Yeah. And I, I got it and I'm excited about that. So. <laughs> I think that's so, there. I have so much respect for everybody, anybody who self-publishes and does everything on their own. Because it's so much work, you know, and, and, and it's like, I, I don't think everybody realizes, you know, when, when they're looking at an indie publisher or they're looking at a self-published person, how much work you have to do behind the scenes. Because it isn't just writing the book, you know, it's writing it, editing it, formatting it, designing it, marketing it, listing it, signing it like at book events and stuff like that, booking the book events. That's, that's like everything. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So you had like, you know, all these great things happen, which is really exciting. And you talked a little bit about how much the community has meant for you and, and how important that, that has become. H- how do you, you, feel about um, social networking and in terms of how it impacts you as an author, um, as with your sales or, you know, what is social media for you? How, how do you best utilize it? Um, I think I have to see it as a vessel um, that carries my, uh, my art. It carries my creations. And then I have to, represent it and keep it safe my dog is like whining at the door so if you hear that that's her <laughs> she's like burp, burp, burp. anyway um i went into i mean i was on social media um in the early days because i was a person i am a personal trainer i just am not physically training right now i just decided to focus more on my writing but um so i had my my personal training side of things and it was just me working out and giving exercises and like uh, wellness tips and things like that because I'm I'm very against like fad diets and things that people use to just make you skinny and stuff like that so that was my whole aspect but if I had to present myself as why you would want to like buy me or invest in me as a trainer as an artist or anything I would freeze like completely freeze up because um, I'm very introverted and it took a long time, I have a friend, Mindy, who owns a small business, uh, and she moved back to Michigan, but she owns a small um, clothing boutique, and she had a couple of us local people act as her models, and so I modeled for her a few times, and it honestly brought me out of my shell, being able to do that, just get in front of the camera, and be myself, and, like, try on some clothes, you know, and I would shake and freeze, and the photographer was like, it's okay, it's okay. And now I'm completely comfortable in front of the camera. I mean, I, you know, I still kind of go back and go, oh, I should have said that, but um, it took me a lot to get used to that. But when I decided to start a bookstagram account, even before I started querying for another bee skin um, in 2020, it was, um, I decided that I just needed to kind of go in there and be myself and let people see me for who I am. You know, sometimes I'm put together, sometimes I'm a hot mess. Um, I'm always pretty creative (laughs) and say things that are a little off the wall and I decided that's what I wanted to present and so then that became a vessel for my photography for my artwork Um, my husband and I are both artists so we kind of like have that thing going on and then um, my books and so it opened up connections with um, you know people such as yourself and like I met my one of my best friends Becca who now lives um a few states away and I feel like I've known her my whole life yet we met on Instagram so social media and social networking has kind of opened up everything on my personal level and professional level so I love that that answer the question yeah absolutely (laughs) I feel pretty much the same way like I I've met so many amazing and wonderful people that I never would have known I think about that all the time I'm like so, like, at, uh, ne- next week, I'm flying down to Texas for the Ghoulish Book Fest, and I'm going to see one of my best friends in the writing world, Grace Reynolds, and I'm oh, so nice. excited. I've never met her in person, but I've known her online for, like, four years, and so oh. I'm, I was just thinking about it the other day, like, I would never have met Grace if it hadn't been for Instagram, for Bookstagram, Yeah, and it's such a weird concept to me, you know? It, it is. But <laughs> I think there there's a lot of negativity on social media but i do think that in the greater scheme of things it's done a remarkable job of bringing people together yes, and there's always going to be negativity everywhere so being able to turn that into art and like share pieces of who you are with the world and 
you know, when it comes down to sharing, you know, yourself, I think people really love that authenticity and being able to identify with you and being like, oh my God, you're a human too, you know? Exactly. And, then, and when it doesn't <laughs> yeah. feel like it's put on or, you know, that it's just part of a show, I think that it gives other people hope that they could also attain it and yeah, they could do what they want to do, you exactly. know? It's just yeah. a very powerful thing when you can be yourself and that creates change. Exactly. Yep. I, I agree completely. Yeah. It's I, wonderful. I love the photos that you post. Like I, I it's, did not know that you were a model, but I was like, she has, she should be a model <laughs> because your pictures are just like amazing. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh yeah. I have, a, I have a lot of fun trying to put them together and I, I mean, I love art, which I'm sure you'll figure out when you read my, my book. I'm kind of obsessed with art. And um, and I love clothes, but not in a sense of wanting to buy things all the time. I don't like fast fashion, but I love clothing in its artistry. And so mm. like being able to put that together with photography, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of my thing. <laughs> it's a nice collaboration. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you write about a lot of fantasy kind of elements, dark fantasy and things like that. So is that? something that you've always written about or has that changed over time I've always written about it everything that I I think everything I've written has had some element of the supernatural in it some speculative I mean maybe not everything but I kind of think everything because I always look at my life in terms of oh that was a curious turn of events I wonder what that means so I think literally everything has had some sort of spec element yeah (laughs) I I think it's really fun when there's like a, a red thread that you follow through artist work and there's just this this returning themes and everything and it it kind of ties all of the books together whether they belong together or not you know yeah. and I just really appreciate that it just gives it a nice rounded out feel I feel to the yeah. art to the author yeah um, I agree so what's something so there's a lot of ups and downs when you're an author mm-hmm. publisher yeah doing everything on your own, doing things with other people. What is something that that you've learned or that you've done that you enjoy doing that you didn't expect that you would? Revisions, actually. (laughs) That is a new one. I have never heard anyone say that. (laughs) Yeah, and it took me a while to figure that out. I get so excited from my editor's notes. (laughs) And um, recently I had Anna Corbeau um was my editor for I stars and Anna. yeah she's just amazing and I felt like oh, this is what this experience should be like <laughs> but um it, everything that I've been through I've been so excited to get my editor's notes back and fine-tune my story because it's it's taking almost an objective perspective I mean everything's subjective but taking an objective perspective and saying okay but why okay but let's do this better and sometimes you're going to say, well, no, that's not what I meant, but you see where they're coming from and you still fine tune it. Um, and I, I just, I don't know. I think I really like constructive criticism and I like making my art the best it could be. So I think that that's um, something that I didn't, because I'm also like a very sensitive, like Enneagram for like, like, don't hurt me, please. But, but at the same time, I want my art to be the best it can be. And yeah. So that's, that's pretty cool. (laughs) Has there ever been a time, you know, when you're like doing revisions that you felt like maybe the, the editor or the, the arc reader maybe didn't get what you were trying to, trying to do. Did you ever feel like you had to change for that? Or did you end up like just rolling with it anyway? I changed a lot in another beast skin because of that. Um, It wasn't, um, I think being received the way I was thinking and I thought, oh, okay, so nobody else is going to see it the way I see it. And so I changed a lot. And I think the the book didn't suffer for it, but I think it shows less of what I necessarily would have put in. But I, it's also, it was my first book. It's my, it was, you know, my debut into the world. And, you know, I wasn't like 18 years old putting it out. But at the same time, a new book is a new book. You know, when you're- Yeah, it is. Your first foray into something is, is what it is. And I learned a lot. And so by a braiding of darkness- I held my ground a lot more and I didn't even know that I could do that. (laughs) Honestly, with another beast skin, I was like, okay, I'll change it. Um, Just because, you know, that's how I was. I wanted to please my editors, my, you know, higher ups. And then with the braiding of darkness, I was like, no, it really needs to be like this to show what it meant. And I think the book is better because of that. Um, And the feedback I've gotten has kind of solidified 
that opinion in my head. <laughs> but um, so I'm careful to kind of examine all aspects. And I, I feel like I do that in everyday life. I kind of see everybody's angle and where people are coming from, because I don't want to just use my experience to dictate um, the way I'm seeing the scene. I want to see where other people are coming from. I just right. feel like that's important in life. So I think it's a delicate balance, too, because it's it's like um, we as the author know everything that's in the book. We know yeah. we know all the ins and outs and everything that there is to know. And that is both a plus side and also a blind spot. Yeah, because there's that translation to the readers, like, you know, yeah. making sure that they're, you know, because we know everything. So yeah. they don't making sure that they get on the same pathway that we do is so important. But then also we, <laughs> we know our book and where it's supposed to go. Right. And, you know, making sure that it isn't changed just because of somebody else's opinion. You know, right. that's yeah. a delicate balance to walk. Absolutely. Definitely. I mean, it's kind of like when you're, when you're proofreading and you realize that you're not going to catch anything at this point, because you know, this book, you've read it 836,000 times, you know, but at the same time, if it were, if, if it were like the developmental aspects of it, or, you know, characterization aspects of it, and someone's saying, I, I don't get it, it doesn't make sense, then you really need to kind of look into it from that perspective, when it's not super technical, right? I mean, yeah. I um. I, I've had moments, you know, when I'm working with other people and we're working on their books and it's always, uh, I try to be really like tactful and careful because, you know, this is somebody's part, it's part of their heart, part of their soul even, you know, and, and yeah. you got to be, you know, careful when you're approaching that and, you know, helping people develop things. So what is something, what is something readers can come to always expect from your book and is there any kind of like um need or or uh, want that you're specifically trying to fill with your stories or do you kind of just write them for yourself um again probably everything I mean I write I write for myself <laughs> um and I'm I guess a plantster like I kind of get an idea but and I'll and I'll jot out like a rough outline just to kind of keep my head on straight because I like to plan things but my characters take me where I need to go you know I just kind of go off the, they go off the rails I go off the rails yeah and that's how we roll and but um I I think as far as fulfilling a need I think what I am about person personally artistically creatively is that um I don't pigeonhole myself there is I'm not just a fantasy author. I don't do, and then I think my, my book is marketed as fantasy romance and it, I don't feel it's that um, because I feel like fantasy romance is a very specific genre and people reading it want a very specific set of events to happen, I feel. And that's, sure. that's not what I wanted from my book. Um, so I don't want to be pigeonholed as that. And I, and I like genre bending. I don't feel like a book should have to be mystery or romance or thriller or this, that, and the other. I feel like, when you have more to the story, I mean, yeah, you have to keep yourself in check and like make sure it all ties together, which is obviously the trick. <laughs> but I like having that multifaceted story. I like being able to immerse so completely in a book that is so multifaceted that it makes you question everything around you. You know, just realize that the world is so much broader. And I think that's what I like to bring to my writing and my art is just that, um, I don't know if broadness is a word, I don't think it is, and I can't think of a word that would, would replace it, but that, you know, that full spectrum, and I think that's that's what it is, and just have full representation of, of everything, you know, of cultures and, you know, the, the full spectrum of what love can be, and friendships, and family, and always food there's always food in my books because I'm always hungry and <laughs> just that <laughs> tactile um feeling I think that's that's what I bring to the table I think that I think that it's so uh it's so interesting to me with genre bending literature because I love it when you can't quite put it into one specific thing because it could be so many different things yeah. And I think that that shows a lot of talent as a writer 
and, and being able to reach so many different people with one book, that is amazing. That is so cool, you know? And and being able to touch into a whole bunch of little places is just, I feel, a, a very, very talented thing. Very ambitious, too, to do it and to do it well. So that people, you know, they're not feeling like you're being like a sellout or something, you know, right. or, you know, things like that. And inclusivity, I think, is just a really important part. I, I, So I feel like as authors, it's our job to ultimately make the world a better place with our Absolutely. literature. Uplift people, bring attention to issues, you know, just generally be nice human beings. <laughs> and yeah. when we have our books, it's such a powerful place to create conversation and to create safe spaces to talk about things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and, and to approach things just naturally, just to let them yeah. be, let them exist and not even make a big deal out of it, I think is a, such a really cool thing when you're writing your stories and, and creating them. Um, yeah, I, uh, I just, I'm even more excited to read your upcoming book. <laughs> <laughs> so when does that one come out? April 25th. April 25th. So we're almost there. Almost. So how does it feel leading up to your release? Do you have any like big things planned or are you feeling nervous or? I'm nervous. I mean, I broke down in tears this morning in my husband's oh. arms. So he's, he's like, what is wrong? And I'm like, I'm so nervous that this is going to go wrong. Um, is my, my release with the Braiding of Darkness last year was really rough. Um, the release was missed and it was just a whole thing. And oh. so I think I have a little bit of PTSD from that. Sure. Bit. <laughs> um, but I am excited because, like I said, this is such a passion project. Um, one of the main characters, there's Oscar and Celia, her uh, brother and sister. And Oscar was what started this book. It was, be it was before we went to Florida, I think. Anyway, he was, like, tapping on my head in the middle of the night. And I was, like, he's, like, an unruly toddler. And I'm, like, what is this? It's like, hi, I exist, and this is a story you need to write. And, and it just unfolded and there were all these coincidences. And then we ended up going, it was like middle of the pandemic. We ended up driving to Florida and like hardly stopping with like 5,000 masks on and renting a cottage that ended up being the exact same cottage that I'd already written about in the book, which is super weird. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, this is the same neighborhood, the same house layout. And it was the same layout of my grandparents' house in Miami that I grew up in. So it was like super weird coincidences. And I have, I, there's a, a very small section in the book where she ends up having to run from a ghost in her house, which sounds really cheesy, but, and, and she, she's just in like her little like night chemise because it's the middle of the summer, it's hot. And there's like a whole line about it seeming like Sylvia Plath. And so I had this white nightgown <laughs> that I was wearing in Florida and I took my dog out. She's epileptic and I have to take her out on a certain schedule and there's no fence in this yard that, of the house that we rented and so I took her out in the morning it's like five o'clock in the morning and I took her out without a leash because she's fine she's going to go potty and come back in and there were two people walking their dogs and of course Coco wants to say hi to everybody because she's the happiest bulldog in the whole world so she takes off like bad out of hell and goes after these two dogs and I'm running on the street in my main character's neighborhood in this white nightgown and I'm like this is ridiculous <laughs> so like so there, yeah, there's a lot of weird you authored a little too close to your story. Huh? <laughs> I know exactly. Like, yes, exactly. So, um, the book needed to happen, and so I'm, I'm I'm so excited for it to happen. And I can show you. I got my author proof of it. And <gasps> that's gorgeous. I love so, that cover. Thank when, you. <laughs> when you debuted it on Instagram, I was like. Because I, I was looking through stories and it popped up in a story and I went, wait a second. And I brought it back and I was just, that is gorgeous. It's so striking. Thank you. I, I uh, How on earth did you it. like come up with that concept? Um, I knew what I wanted. I knew that I wanted a frame um, with water pouring out. And I just, I, I, in my head, it was like, if you lifted up a picture frame, the ocean would pour out of it. Um, and then I was just like, I kind of want the origami cranes because that's a, a thing in the book, but I don't want it to be like overtly origami crane because it's not a Japanese novel either. I didn't want it to be like, I didn't want to pretend like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to go that route. 
Um, so I kind of wanted hints of what the story was about, the darkness of the water, um, yet the lightness with, you know, the, the palm trees, because it's, it's like Florida, but the um, oppressiveness of like that, the heaviness of lifting up the water coming out and everything. And so I kind of was presenting these ideas to the designers and they would, you know, send back proofs and like, not quite, can we do this? Oh, can the palms be over here? And I, I really wish I was good with graphic design because I'm not, and I just have ideas. And I would just send it back and they got it right. And then at the last minute I said, and let's make the background pink instead of black. And so we switched it and I'm like, that's it, we're done. <laughs> this is the cover. <laughs> so um, originally the background was black and it looked nice, but it didn't have that that pop that I feel like really gives you the story. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it. The pink is such a striking background color. Oh, and you know, I I love it when there are like uh, books that are unexpected colors. You know, yeah, I, it I, it stands out more. You know, like yeah. if I was to go to a, through a bookstore, I would pick that book up a hundred percent because it, it just <laughs> looks really interesting. Right, I'm a yeah. sucker for a pretty book cover. Like <laughs> I have bought many books. Uh, just because of the cover. <laughs> yeah, so. I have too. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's also a testament to indie publishing too, um, whether it's with a small indie publisher or self-publishing or, you know, whatever aspect of indie publishing, that kind of creative control when you have, whether it's the publisher who is very close to the story themselves, or it's the actual author who has ideas for the cover, I feel like it really um it brings out the ideas of the story when they have a hand in the design i think that you know it it can really um make it seem like the story is just oozing out of the book when you walk by it i agree a hundred percent i think the author input is so important when you're reading because you know we we have the story in our brains we have the characters we have the aesthetic and the vibe better than anybody yeah. So having the to be able to to work with people one one or even to do it yourself if you're that talented or gifted, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> so, <laughs> if, but to be able to do that and pull it together, it's just, I think, really important. And I think that that is why so many so many indie books stand out in yeah. the crowd because I we do we don't follow trends. We're not, you know, it's not uh, about. It, or even like you know fitting into a house theme like right. there's a lot of traditional publishing houses that have like a, a specific theme for their genres right. so not yeah. having to like you know sit and fit into that specifically I think is so important and we say don't judge a book by its cover but we all do and I think that the cover is one of the it's like your it's like your what is it your 10 second elevator pitch yeah. is your it cover is. yeah and yeah. so yeah. And having something that is you know, beautiful and, and draws people in and it makes them interesting is, is really, really important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I felt that way even with Another Beast Skin. And I did have almost full creative control on that as well, which I thought was great. And I had this like really bad rudimentary sketch. I'm like, okay, I want like a double horn, one side up, one side down with the three stars and stuff like that. And then my daughter did a quick sketch of the of the crystals and I gave that to the designer and they used the exact one thing that she did. And so that's awesome. you know, when we put it together, that's, you know, it, it came about. So it was kind of cool. That is um, really cool. But it really, yeah, it really is. I think it really does show a different level of or depth to the art itself. So, yeah. That's a special meaning for you too, to have that piece of your, your daughter in there involved with it and everything. Yeah. That is really fun. <laughs> yeah um it's nice when when bits and pieces of that you know come together that I I love books that have like hidden things for that the author is put in there for their family or for themselves I did that a lot with my book there's like a whole bunch of stuff in there and to anybody who's reading it it would just be in like just a part of the book right like it just is what it is but it's all seeded with things from my real life or from my friends or like, you know, mm-hmm. and it just makes it that much more special, I think. I agree. And then you can yeah. give, like you, know, like, you can give your friends or your family copies of your book. 
And then hopefully if they're as in tune with you as you think you are, <laughs> if you think that they are, <laughs> they'll read it and they'll pick up on those things, you know? And I think yeah. that's just really cool. And that's just another yeah. thing about like being an author is like, absolutely. You yeah. can, you keep, you can immortalize anybody that you want, exactly. you know, including the bad guys, uh, yeah. not necessarily immortalize them, but you could definitely kill them off. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> or make them suffer. <laughs> yes. That's a, an over an extended period of time too, you know? Absolutely. We're in yes. order for the long haul. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that. That is so, that's really, that's really neat. Um, the whole process from start to finish, it's just, it can be so stressful and at times like really overwhelming. But and when you get that end product, it's just so exciting and just everything was worth it. I was like, that was your absolutely. why moment. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is, this is what it's all about. It's seeing, everything that we put into it just come to fruition really yeah talk about manifesting right like that 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 is literally what it is isn't it exactly yeah you could you know that's what it is of energy (laughs) absolutely you write down what you want to do but if you're actually writing the story you're doing that anyway yeah literally written the book on (laughs) okay (laughs) you're like you're canceled fine So you, you've experienced a lot. You have so much cool stuff that's coming up. What is, so, so if you could go back and you could tell yourself something to start out with, I know we had talked about like the contract bit and things like that. What is some advice that you would give yourself? Um, Probably to trust my instincts a little bit more. Mm, That's Um, a good one. Just, you know, both creatively and legally and just kind of, really kind of tune into that and not think that the red flags that are flying in my head creatively or legally is um, you know aren't worth noting I think that's probably a big thing of it and that's probably something that we can say our whole life you know there's probably a lot of red flags we ignore um, with you know people relationships school anything so that's probably the biggest thing Um, yeah I think that's probably it I think a lot of authors who are just starting out they uh, don't give themselves enough credit and and there's such a such a hunger and drive to be published and to get out there that you know we can sometimes settle for the first good thing that comes yeah. to us you know or yeah. or we rush the process a little bit i know that i did my first book um so i think having value and and knowing that you have value yeah. and holding yourself to those standards is so important Exactly. You know? Yeah. And you, I, I know I'm when I first got, and I still feel this way now is, is that, you know, there's still so many things I don't know and experiences that I haven't had yet. And so you think, oh, well, who, who am I to be doing this or, or, you know, whatever. Right. But at the end of the day, you can only write your story. Nobody exactly. else can. So you have to make sure that you value that and, and hold it, you know, preciously. Right. Absolutely. And if you're willing to put in the work to make it what it should be, then honestly, there's no stopping you. And I feel like that's with you, like with your publishing company and what you've done with the world, I think is, is true. You know, I just feel like there's no stopping you. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm also just a little (laughs) bit unhinged. (laughs) That helps immensely. (laughs) That's cool. (laughs) Like we're all unhinged. (laughs) So where can readers best connect with you? Where do you like to interact with readers the most? Mainly on Instagram, um, Twitter. I was active for a while and honestly, it just it got a little bit too much for me. I wasn't, yeah. I'm not really down with it. I don't blame um, you. So, yeah. So mainly on Instagram, I am on, on, on TikTok and I do have a Facebook page, um, which, you know, I'll interact with if I'm tagged with something and I, you know, I will post on it just because I have books to market. Um, but my Facebook page is kind of just for my mom. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, um, but yeah, the Instagram, I think, and I'm, I'm pretty like open there and I'm, you know, I respond to DMs and I mean, I'm, I'm quick on the block because I get some weirdos, but you know, <laughs> but yeah, feel that. yeah. And I'm on Goodreads too. So, yeah. And where can we find your books, especially the new one that's coming out? So Stars Like Gasoline is currently available for pre-order on Amazon Kindle. And as soon as I get the updated cover uploaded, it will be available for pre-order on Ingram. Um, so wherever books are sold. 
and um, and then my other two books, Another Day's Skin and A Braiding of Darkness, are available wherever books are sold, including for Barnes and Noble brick and mortar stores in the Los Angeles area. I have signed copies everywhere. So. That is yeah. awesome. Oh my gosh! Well, thank you so much for coming to hang out with us for a while to Thanks talk about me. your book and everything that's coming up. Um, I'm so excited. I hope I get to see you at the LA Book Festival again. Yes, I will. Be I there. can't believe it's almost time. <laughs> right? I know, I know. Yes. I'm yeah, so excited. I'm looking forward to it so much. So <laughs> yes. Yeah. So everybody, please go give Jessica a follow. Talk to her on Instagram, read her book, um, and make sure you're out there pre-ordering her newest one. And what is the title one more time? Stars Like Gasoline. Perfect. And I'll include all of the links below so that you can find them easily and follow Jessica and check out all of her books. So Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I had such a good time. I was really looking forward to it. I was too. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was good seeing you. All right. Well, all right, everybody. This has been another episode of Nights with Evan Pinion. So happy to have you here. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Um, and remember, we may be different species, but we're all part of the same family. So please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and we will see you soon.